Okay. All right. Hi, I started a little early so that some of you could get here um, early if you wanted to. So I'm going to put this up so you can see. <laughs> All right, we got a few more seconds. We're going to go live. All right, five o'clock. Hi, welcome. I'm going to wait for some more people to come in. I do have my windows open, so if you hear things going on outside, I'll, um, you know, it's live. What can I tell you? So I wanted to show you something very interesting. I, my color printer's working. Thanks to Mike for helping that become, Mike and my husband for making that a reality. That's the sign. Salute, Mary Jean. So, I'm gonna wait for a few more people to come in, but I am gonna show you something that's a little different today. So, because it's obviously uh, summertime, summertime just happened, we woke up with it and here it is. I have switched things up to something a little different. This is my, yay, color, that's right, Kathy. This is my little beverage for today. I'm using my Merrick Library swag. I don't know if you can see that. And I decided that since it was so warm and pretty out, uh, I switched from Dr. Pepper to Capri Sun. So watch what happens to this little. Mm. Hooray. Pretty nice, huh? And yes, this is, an... it's a coconut. See that? Nice little coconut with my straw. Mm. Happy Friday. Hi, Evelyn. Hello, Mary Jean. Hello, Kathy. Mwah. Hello, everybody else who is joining us now. Welcome to the Merrick Library. Happy half hour. Yes, Jill. Um, this half hour has two sponsors today. The first sponsor is Merrick Library, of course. We love the Merrick Library, so that's the first sponsor. The second sponsor is Heavy Humidity Hair, which that's what's happening right today. And I'm blow drying it. No, nope, nope. Not, not working is what it is. Um, may these be the only problems that we have, right? So sponsored today, this episode seven by Merrick Library and Heavy Humidity Hair. So everyone can watch it, just get higher and higher, bigger and bigger before the half hour is up. Hello, Lori. Mwah. Jill, love you. All right, so I wanted to thank all the Merrick patrons who are here. I want to thank all of friends near and far. I really want to say how much we love and miss our Merrick patrons very, very much, even though the building is closed. We are open virtually. And if any of you are out there saying, you know, I, I people you know don't have Facebook and they can't get into Facebook, just know that even if you don't have Facebook and even if you don't have social media, but you do have a computer, do you know that you can watch all these episodes on YouTube? Yes, YouTube. I decided to keep the graphic because I don't want to waste the ink. So you can go to YouTube, Merrick Library NY, and you can watch all of the back episodes and the story times are there and the crafts are there and Billy's Boredom Busters are there and you're not going to want to miss that because those are pretty amazing. And so all of that is there. So it doesn't matter if you don't have Facebook or your friends don't have Facebook, but they do want to see some of the content that Merrick Library is producing for everybody, especially for our patrons, please go to the YouTube page. What do I always say about this slide? It's black and white, but our YouTube channel comes to you live in color. Yay! And if you are just joining us, so don't forget to check that out. By the way, Billy made, Billy's Board and Busters this week, he made an infinity, um, no, uh, he made a, he made a necklace that has to do with um, lost. Now, give me a second. It'll come to me what that's called. If anybody is out there who remembers the necklace that you get when you're in Lost. 
that's what he made. It was amazing. It looked beautiful. And I was very, it's not infinity. It's called something else. Tried necklace, tribal immunity. Thank you, Angela. <laughs> See, I was close. Infinity, immunity. God bless you, Angela. From Survivor. Mwah. Te amo. So if you're just joining us today, it's suddenly summer. And I changed things up from Dr. Pepper to Capri Sun. And I've got this little coconut here. See? And I also have some Merrick Library swag, which is very, very old. But watch what happens. Mm. It's like additional party in your beverage. Yay. So Billy's Board and Busters on the YouTube channel, as well as all of the story times, many, many of the crafts, any of the tutorial videos, fun things that are there. So if you don't have Facebook, it's okay. If you don't have social media, it's okay. You can go right to the channel and see Merrick, Merrick Library TV. Easy peasy. Okay. Um, thanks to everybody for joining me. It is such a beautiful <laughs> afternoon. I can't believe you're here, but thank you. I also wanted to shout out to all of our first responders. You guys are amazing. And I missed the flyover today probably because I was chewing, because I was eating lunch around that time. So if they flew over, I missed it. But I understand that there was a flyover. And um, so I missed it, but that was wonderful that they did that. I hope all of you are staying home and staying safe and staying healthy. This is episode seven. And the other thing about the YouTube channel is you can watch the steady progression of my hair get lighter, longer, and a little grayer is what it is. So we had some exciting things happening this week. I know most of you are aware that I did a book discussion for Searching for Sylvie Lee, right? That was back on May 6th. It was great. We had, I don't even know how many people were there, 37, 38 people. That was wonderful. But then Jean Kwok, who is the author of Searching for Sylvie Lee, she was not able to join us at the book discussion because it's the time difference for the Netherlands is six years, six years, six, six hours ahead. So uh, she wasn't able to do that. But she, when I spoke to her, she offered to come on. I said, you want to do a Zoom live? And she did. She did a Zoom live. Not only did she do that, but our reader services librarian, Shannon, made this beautiful slide, which then Jean Kwok proceeded to place all over social media. So she tweeted it. It went on Instagram. I think it was Instagram. It went, <laughs> went everywhere. So yay, Shannon. So this beautiful slide went everywhere and it was it was pretty amazing. And as of this view, as of now, it was I think I wrote it down. We have up to 1400 views of this incredibly funny hour long interview. Now, I wouldn't tell you to waste your time. If I didn't think it was good, I'd say just, you know, do this. But I will tell you, if you can find this, is so this is on YouTube, but it's also in our, um, on our Facebook page. So you can kind of scroll down to try to find it. But I would say the last half hour of the interview, she started telling stories about her life in the Netherlands. And I have to tell you, I was, I burst out laughing from her. She was so funny. And um, so kind. Oh, yeah, Lori said Jean Clock was fabulous. She really was fabulous. And the best part about what she did, she was so generous with her time and loved her fans and loved all the patrons, is that there must have been close to 85, 89 comments. After the interview was over, she went back in and responded to every single person personally. I mean, I. That's amazing that she would do that. And I was so happy that she did. And it was an incredible use of her time to spend it with the fans and um, to connect that way. So if you are not familiar with Searching for Sylvie Lee, I recommend it. Donna said that she is loving Searching for Sylvie Lee. Yes, you can get it on Hoopla. And that's another thing. It is not a... It's such a distracting read. It's it's a little bit of a mystery, but it's not a traditional mystery. It's, a, it's sort of a literary fiction mystery, but it's also an immigration story. It's also a historical fiction. It's worth your time. I really would tell you if it wasn't, um, and you can come back and you know throw tomatoes at my house if you didn't like it. But yes, 
Oh, thank you, Lori. Um, so that's uh, Jean Kwok. You can find the interview that we did on Facebook Live. It was the first time I had done it, and the only thing I couldn't remember is how to hang up. So <laughs> you can watch me fumble and be a complete dope. Uh, for those of you who might be interested, our next book discussion is, I'm never going to get this right, is uh, In the Time of the Butterflies. It's on Hoopla, and it's also on Libby. So that's June 3rd. Our newsletter just went out today, uh, electronic newsletter. So if you're on the mailing list, you can find it. And the link to um, register is right there. You just sort of click in and, and put your information in, and it'll generate an invitation for you. And that will be on June 3rd at 7 p.m. So isn't that a pretty graphic? So that was that. That happened there. And oh, no, oh, no. Oh, there it is, Ray. Uh, Lori is actually saying, hello, Lori. Love that lady. Yes, Evelyn, she did answer your comments. She answered everybody. She even gave a shout out to, to Jill, Librarian Jill. I mean, it was just, it was just incredible. Then she just retweeted the interview and she was retweeting and she, then she actually told the story in her tweet about what we talked about on the bicycles in the Netherlands. It was very, very funny. So um, I hope you get a chance to watch it because it's, it's really funny. Lori is saying that she just finished reading The Chelsea Girls and she's going to start reading the new book from her. Oh, yeah, she loves that Victoria Thompson series and she's going to start reading Murder on Pleasant Avenue. So if you're reading a book, plop it in the comments and I'll share it with everybody because why not? That's what we're, we do here. We share. And yes, Donna, it is beautifully written. You know, there's so many, um, I've read a couple of passages, which who the heck do I think I am reading Jean Kwok's words back to her? I have some nerve. Um, but some of the piece, she's very personal in all of her books, right? So she talks about the fact that her brother was missing, which sort of prompted her to write Searching for Sylvie Lee. I'm not gonna say anything more about it because you can watch the interview and, um, Yes, and Ellen is saying to Lori, yes, Lions of Fifth Avenue by Fiona Davis is amazing. It's coming out. I don't know what the pushback date is for that, but it takes place in the New York Public Library, Lions of Fifth Avenue. Yay. So, um, Donna, I'm so glad you're enjoying it because it's it's a good... Um... Hi, Lita. Mwah. How are you? Wednesday, Wednesday. Yes, it was great. And she's reading Lost, uh, Lost in Trans, Girl in Translation. I don't know if you're that, if that's the one you mean. Um, yes, Mary Jean, you, I was surprised she replied to everybody's comments. She was just, um, she was just, she was just terrific. Yeah, Lost in Translation was also great. Again, this is all Jean Kwok just being Jean and just telling you everything. Her website is incredible. So I strongly suggest that you, you know, catch up to that if you can. Time for some Capri Sun in my... Mm. Very tasty. Uh, if you are just joining me, please remember that this episode is hosted, uh, is uh, being sponsored by Mer Merrick Library and my heavy humidity hair. So that's also very interesting. Now, if you know anybody in your life that has teenagers, we have, we do have a quiz coming up, so get your pens ready. Um, Miriam is one of our youth services librarians. So if you know any teens in your life that are looking for something to do, I mean, they're probably all looking for something to do. I don't think they're watching this, although, you know, that's fine. She is there's something called Lit Night In. Uh, grab your friends for a night of fun games. So you do participate on Zoom in all of these really fun games. You can register online. Register online in this case at the North Merrick Library, but Merrick Library is participating in this event. And I'm sure Miriam will be there and you'll get to meet her in person. She is a delight. So definitely check that out. All of that is in our e-newsletter. If you don't get our e-newsletter, you can sign up on our homepage. And also, I wanted to mention before we get to our trivia, our incredible Pinterest page. Let me just tell you something that since we started talking about it, it has taken off like wildfire. So the Pinterest page, 
I don't know that you have to be a member. I'm not exactly sure if um, Michelle is on. She will let me know. I think you just kind of click in and, and you can start reading it. It is curated content. So it's adult reading. It is young adult. It is children's. And it's all stuff that the librarians at Merrick Library recommend as books to read. Books from Hoopla, books from Overdrive, books in general. And if, when you get to the page, you kind of, it looks something like this. And it breaks things out in like legal fiction you can read. And it just has all kinds of amazing things. So please check it out if you can. It's, um, if you're really looking for something interesting to just sort of read and browse, it's perfect for window shopping our Pinterest page, Merrick Library. So that's Michelle, she did an amazing job. One of the things we talked about, because I'm all over this Joe Exotic thing, is we talked about it briefly last week, Nicolas Cage is going to be in the Netflix version. I like Nick Cage, I think he's very funny. Check it out, well, I'll let you know, I'll keep you posted. Um, today's episode, we're gonna talk about, see these magazines, remember I used to, Go so stand online at the supermarket and it smells pretty, right? Little Charlize there, reading the magazine while you're waiting. Um, good time to put your phone down and just sort of tune out with the magazine. It's hard to do that now, right? You really can't do that. So did you know that with your library card, you can do this? Go to RB Digital. You can download the app. You can find it on our website. There's a little tab for RB Digital. I don't know why they call it. It's recorded books digital, but it's fine. Um, these are all of the magazines. There's over 3,000 magazines that are there. And after we're done with this happy half hour, go to the Facebook page because Librarian Amy put together an amazing tutorial of how to get RB Digital on your phone, on your on your phone, on your reading device, on your laptop, on your computer whatever you want. So that's RB Digital. And now we're going to start the quiz, okay? Because we're talking about RB Digital, and this is great, I am telling you, some of the magazines have hypertext links. So if there's a mention of a recipe or a store that talks about, you know, whatever is going on in the article, if you click on that, it will bring you to wherever they mention also Adam Driver. If you can see him. Yes, Adam Driver's there. Um, so, okay, we're going to start with our little quiz, and these are all magazine related questions. Uh, Donna is saying, Donna is recommending that she says she rarely watches TV and she binge watch Never Have I Ever on Netflix with my daughter who is 15. If you remember Square Pegs, I, I love that. Uh, and my so-called life, why did they cancel that? Why did they cancel that show? You will love this show produced by Mindy Kaling. Also, very big Mindy Kaling show. She really can't do anything wrong. Thank you, Donna. So Donna is recommending Never Have I Ever on Netflix. And maybe that's something I'm gonna watch tonight because it sounds like it's great, but first, Okay, Angela, I hope you're getting your cooking done. And if you really need a laugh because it's not working out, just turn around, look at the screen, you could look at my hair because that alone is worth all the laughs. Okay, here we go. First question. What do we got? 518. Okay, I am going to really try to get you guys out of here on time. It's all about RB Digital. Remember what I said at the end of this? We have a uh, Amy put together, a librarian, reader services librarian, Amy Armstrong put together an amazing tutorial that is so easy to follow along. <laughs> Let's put it this way. I was able to do it. <laughs> so I would check that out. Um, and it'll be up on Facebook and I think other social media places as well. But one of them will let me know if that's the case. But uh, certainly go to Facebook and you can um, you can find it there. Okay, so remember, RB Digital, 3,000 magazines. The way I've been going crazy over Hoopla, this is just as good because you don't have to worry about anything. It automatically delivers to your inbox. You tap on the link, boom, it opens, and it stays there. You will get your monthly delivery of the journal just the way you will in your mailbox, except it goes to your 
your, e your, e um, your email. So it's great. Okay, first question. I know Lori is our ringer. Um, what's the new staff picks book, Lori? Uh, Chelsea uh, Lyons at Fifth Avenue? I'm not sure which one she means. She'll let me know. Okay, get ready. Here we go. I would do whatever Lori Fencer Stock does. Let her answer and then you answer after her. This magazine began publication in 1953 and today is one of the most widely read publications in the United States. Can you name the publication? Came out in 1953, that's when it began its publication and it is one of the most widely read publications in the United States. Is it A, Reader's Digest, is it B, Saturday Evening Post, or is it C, TV Guide? So, 1953, first day of publication, the most widely read publication in the United States, and is it A, Reader's Digest, B, Saturday Evening Post, or C, TV Guide? <laughs> Evelyn Cosmo wasn't one of the choices, but <laughs> maybe that's... <laughs> I don't, um, I don't disagree, um, but this is what it's saying. 1953 is probably a key to figuring it out. Um, <laughs> Evelyn, I like the way you think, hey, it's Friday. We can do anything we want, right? Um, and that actually, the magazine that they talk about here is on RB Digital. It is not featured in this picture, but you can also get it on RB Digital. So. All right, um, we've got a couple of people, somebody, Lori saying TV Guide, Evelyn saying Reader's Digest, Lita, Lita, love, love you, Lita. She's saying TV Guide. So I'll give it a few more seconds and let's see. Um, Um, Evelyn's wrong. Okay. I, I don't know. I still like the Cosmo. So I'm going to give you the answer because I want to move on to something other, some other thing that's pretty exciting that's, that's going on. The answer is, Lita, take your, take your sip, TV Guide magazine. TV Guide is read by over 30 million people each week with 10 million subscribers. 10 million. Since 1953, TV Guide has produced over 2,500 covers. Cover, you know, I guess there. Um, Mary Jean. <laughs> but maybe, maybe your parents did. I don't, you know, maybe. Um, yes. So, I do remember as a kid getting a TV Guide magazine, and I remember there used to be a crossword puzzle in the back that I remember my mom would always try to, you know, show me how to do crossword puzzles there, and then she kind of moved me over to the <laughs> New York Times, which is really very hard, but that's okay. We try. We try. Um, I'm going to have a little more Capri Sun because it is very, very tasty. And um, Evelyn's asking why, why? Yes, Lori, you got it right, correct, TV Guide. Love doing the crossword puzzle. I, it's the best, but sometimes in New York Times, I guess it depends on how late I stayed out the night before because unless you do it Saturday, you get the advanced sections. Okay, this is one of my favorite questions. The first cover of this magazine featured Mia Farrow in 19... 74. What magazine is it? So, came out in 1974, and the very first cover they had, what, um, the very first cover that they had featured Mia Farrow in 1974. Is it People Magazine, Vanity Fair, or Us Weekly? <laughs> Evelyn says, Ms. Evelyn, you gotta wait till I give you the choices. <laughs> uh, 
Oh my God, it was really a long week, wasn't it? But I have to say, if you, you've got to watch that Gene Clock interview because, and come in at the half hour mark if you're not that interested in the stuff that comes before because she is very, very funny and she was just a blast and we all had a great time with her. Um, <laughs> no, Ms. was not a choice. <laughs> Evelyn, I'm going to give you the choices and then you pick from what I give you. Uh, Mia Farrow, 1974. For the first issue of this magazine, was it People, Vanity Fair, or Us Weekly? Okay, so there you go. Um, <laughs> yes. Okay, we got a couple of peoples coming in. We got a couple of peoples coming in. Mia Farrow, yes. I'm assuming you mean Mia Farrow, Evelyn. I'm not sure. Uh, oh, Gene Kwok's Bicycle Story. Yes, I am telling you. I... There we, I mean, it's Facebook Live. It's Zoom Live. You can't even, it's not like, like you can cut. It's not like you can, you know, you're kind of stuck there. And I mean, I was bursting out laughing. My husband was working in the other room. He's like, oh, what the heck is going on in there? I'm like, you can't even imagine. She was hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. Yes, Jean Kwok, great. So you got to catch it if you haven't already. And if you know somebody in your life who could use a laugh, I'm just telling you, you got to watch. Just let them see it. You can walk away and just press play. Okay, first cover, magazine, 1974. I don't know if Big Bill is out there, but if he is, hello, Big Bill. Uh, 1974, the answer is, hold on, let's see, we got another comment coming in. Yes, that was a riot, Lori. I mean, I don't want to say anything if you haven't, they haven't seen it, but okay. The answer is People Magazine. I think everybody got that right. I think so, People Magazine. All right, so if you, now I have no idea who is on TV. I know it is very, sometimes I'm like, who is that person? Um, but yeah, so if you got it right, well, good. Yes, yeah, so I have my, window open a little bit so you may hear my neighbor chatting in the background. Don't worry about that. Um, okay. The other thing I wanted to mention, again, RB Digital, get your magazines. This is an amazing service. I love it because you don't have to pay for anything. And I think I said last time I was reading, it was a, a um, Canadian living because, you know, if you could live in Canada, you know, maybe that's not a bad thing. Okay. Um, Here's my next question. In 1940, wait, no, I don't want to ask that question. There's another question I wanted to ask this crowd. Okay. You ready for this one? <laughs> one of the most recognizable, oh my goodness, one of the most recognizable publications in its genre. This magazine is based more as a source of entertainment than it is credible news. So in its genre for publications, it's actually owned by America Media. It is a source of entertainment more than it is credible news. So you shouldn't be reading it for credible news is what this question is saying. I'll let you be the judge of that. So most recognizable, if you say the name, of the, everyone knows what it is. And it's either derision or they love it. Okay, so three choices. Is, the, is this magazine, the National Enquirer, Star Magazine, or OK Magazine? So it is owned by American Media, and it is uh, supposed to be read as entertainment rather than credible news. So the answer is, um, the question is, your choices are National Enquirer, Star Magazine, or OK. OK, so we'll, we'll come back to that. Enquirer. Evelyn says Enquirer. We'll see if Evelyn is right. I do want to tell you about something that's new on Hoopla that just came out in there. Um, oh, hi, Janet. Something that just came out on Hoopla. OK, so all of you who know me know that these are the kind of things that I like to read. And when so, oh, Gretchen Anthony, look at the surprise author guest today. Woo! Wait, hold on. 
Hooray! Author Gretchen Anthony just crashed our happy half hour. Let's give her a round of applause. Who is Gretchen Anthony, you ask? Why, Gretchen Anthony is the author of Evergreen Tidings from the Bound Gardeners, one of my very favorite books from I'm not even sure what year because I've had some Capri Sun, but that's okay. Um, an amazing book. She's got a new book coming out, which I think is either July or August, and she can tell you about that in the comment section, called, uh, oh dear, goodness, it went right out of my head. Um, the kids are going to ask. There it is. Too much Capri Sun and the brain fries. Okay, so she's got this brand new book called The Kids Are Going to Ask. If I knew she was coming, I could hold up the cover. The cover is amazing. Please go back. Find Evergreen Titans from the Bam Gardeners. It is just such a funny book. And I just love, I, she can't do anything wrong as far as I'm concerned. She is the best. Uh, July 28th, thank you, Gretchen. So everybody out there, please tip your hat, give her a little hello, send some love to author Gretchen Anthony. Because I'm thrilled that she's here and I did not know she was gonna be here. And I was actually a guest on her show last Tuesday. I don't even know. I, I don't know what day. I don't know what day it is. It's Friday. That's all. <laughs> Thank God it's Friday. Uh, two weeks ago, she's this incredible show on Facebook Live where she interviews authors and notables and although I don't know why she picked me, but and we talk about books on the show and it's really great. When I was on, we talked about Britt Marie was here and it was such a fun interview and discussion and Gretchen's cousin Matthew was there and he was hilarious. Um, May 5th, yes. So Gretchen, in the comments, just write down the name of the, if you can, the name of the book discussion because I do want people to go and check it out because it's really, it's a great interview and there's a lot of good authors that are featured and it's just a lot of fun and please send my regard, well, tell cousin Matthew Cheers from me. Yes, I'm drinking out of a coconut today. Just Capri Sun. Um, so Gretchen will throw the comment in there and then you can sort of watch that. And it's usually on Tuesday nights. And I think it's at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. So it's 8 o'clock for us. But what a great interview. We talked about Britt Marie was here. And honestly, an hour wasn't enough. I could have just kept talking with her about that book. And what was great is the audience participation and everybody who was watching it was amazing. Okay, so what was the trivia question? One of the most recognizable, let's see, yes, it's the book discussion that Gretchen runs is called the Just Gonna Laugh Book Club. And it is on Facebook and it's Facebook, right, written, written by Gretchen. She's put it in the comments, so please check that out and um, make sure you put that on your calendar. Is my cup from Trader Fix? <laughs> I, I mean, you know, I'd like to say I have a palm tree in my backyard and I had my husband scale it to, yes. My, actually, it's really funny, Donna, that you say that because my parents used to go to Trader Vix and the Hawaii Kai back in the day and my mom would come home with these, like, um, uh, totem pole kind of cups that she would drink the Mai Tai in, which is why I am genetically predisposed to loving Mai Tais. My favorite drink in the world is a Mai Tai. So, and kind of matches my blouse now that I think about it. So I have to learn how to make one for myself, I suppose. Okay, so we were talking about the most recognizable publication in its genre, America Media is the owner of the publication. They produce it. It is a magazine that is used more as a source of entertainment than credible news. Your options are National Enquirer, Star Magazine, or OK Magazine. And if you, I don't know, remember, I have to scroll back up to see your answers, but the answer is the National Enquirer. Bear in mind, the question says, I didn't write the question, the question says that the magazine is based more as a source of entertainment than credible news. I'm just reading the question. I, you know, I'm not gonna get involved in all of that. 
So if you got it right, cheers to you. If you didn't get it right, just do what you have to do. Okay. Oh my gosh, Gretchen, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> right. So every week we do a little quiz up based on your three for three, Lori. Of course you are because you're perfect and you know how much I love you and you know how perfect you are and you know what I think about all of that. Okay. So my next thing is because you all know me very well, you know how much I love a certain genre. People read cozy mysteries. People read, um, women's literature. I read just about everything, but one of the things that is near and dear besides science fiction and speculative fiction is I will get lost in the sauce in a thriller. And I am a little, it's a little dark thrillers, but what is new to Hoopla this week? This is not for the faint of heart. I'm just warning you right away. This book called The Chestnut Man. Okay. So the guy who wrote this book is the creator of the television show called The Killing. It was on, I don't know what show it was on. It was on a while ago and then it's just, it's great. But then I just found out that not only is it on Hoopla, but it's going to be a Netflix series. So I love the tagline, um, The Chestnut Man. If you find one, he's already found you. Carolyn is here for that. So a psychopath is terrorizing Copenhagen. His calling card is the chestnut man. Now, I know it's not for everybody, but I just want you to know that it is really well written and it is not for the faint of heart, but I was so excited that it was there on Hoopla. I wanted to tell you, this is why I like Hoopla because there is no weight, et cetera. The other amazing thing that I saw, I don't know if you know who Ellie Griffiths is, if you don't, you must put her on your TBR list because Stranger Diaries just showed up. This is a standalone by Ellie Griffiths. She is the author of all of these other things. Uh, the Ruth Galloway series. She is an anthropologist who gets called in to solve cases for obvious reasons. I will, that's all I'll say about that. But she's got this standalone Stranger Diaries, which won a ton of awards in 2019. I read it as a galley, but you don't have to wait to read it. It is beautifully written. It is compelling. It is not very violent. A really good mystery suspense. It will take you away from everything. But also Hoopla has every single Ruth Galloway, Ruth Galloway book on their site. I mean, you can't, you can't beat it. So start with the crossing places. And I just had to keep going and see, they're not long. Maybe the books are like 225. They're not like 300 page books. Quick, 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 quick. Um, and you will love all the characters. So I promise next week I will choose a different genre, but I wanted to share that with my thriller people out there because, um, Yes, Jill, exactly. Because, you know, there's a lot of, there's not a lot of us that are sort of um, outspoken about that. But there's actually an RB Digital, a couple of science fiction magazines, so you can check that out too. Thrills, 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 and chills. And if you're looking for specific magazines or specific titles, our Pinterest page is chock full of staff picks in many, many different genres. And it's really great. It's curated content. Michelle, who works in user experience department, does a wonderful job. She gets books from Reader Services, YA, Children's. She does a great job. So this is what, this is sort of the advertisement. And this is kind of what the landing page looks like when you get there. And then it goes by genre. So that's, that's that. Um, oh, also, I don't know if anybody remembered this thing from last week. Yes, that is me showing off with Pulitzer Prize winning author, Elizabeth Strap. Yes. So I wanted to give you that because I don't get tired of looking at it. Okay. So it's 539, but I do want to give you one more trivia question. And also please put in your comments anything you're reading. Actually, Gretchen, what are you reading right now? Are you, what are you preparing for? You're having your next, uh, 
your next discussion, your next book show is, your episode is the 19th, and I can't remember. Actually, you have somebody really big coming up, Ryan. Um, is it the 19th? Oh, I know. Oh, my God, Gretchen. I Let me just tell you something. How, why they? I don't know how they didn't call the police. Because <laughs> they could have called the cops. I hope there's no order of protection. <laughs> don't worry, Gretchen. The next time I see, hopefully one of these days I'll, I'll see you actually in person. I'm going to take the same picture and you know exactly what book I'm going to be holding. I'll be holding up two books. You know which books those are. So I happen to be, yes, Donna, I was at Book Expo and I just shared this picture to every single person in my um, in my contacts. They were like, I apparently leave this woman alone. But it was, yes. And I think the first person I probably called was my sister. Say, oh my God, I just met Elizabeth Stratton. She was uh, delightful and she was, she was aces. Um, okay, yes. Jay Ryan, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce his last name, is going to be on with Gretchen on June 2nd. And I think it's Great Kitchens of the Midwest was the first book. I think that's exact close maybe to the title. Um, somebody is probably on, you can find it. Somebody will put it in the comments. But that's a huge, I mean, that's an amazing guest to have on. He's that's just terrific. So I'm, I'm thrilled. And um, next, on the 19th, Gretchen's going to have To Have and To Hoax by Mother Waters. So you can always, she put comment in there and you can, you can look that up. Okay, here's a fun one. What magazine? Love Ellie, Merrick Mystery Book Club did Stranger Diaries. Yeah, it's great. It's just did you like it, Mary Jean? Because I thought it was really good. And uh, a page turner, and I, I really liked it. Actually, I am reading right now, which I think this comes out. I am just about to finish. <laughs> Sorry, it's a theme. Uh, the Distant Dead by Heather Young. And um, it's a, what does it say here? Timely, twisty thriller. Really, really good. And then a very dark book that's coming out over the summer is called The Nothing Man. Chestnut Man, Nothing Man, but you know, that's that's my thing. The Logger Queen of Minnesota on June 2nd. Yes. I mean, so follow Gretchen Anthony. Go take check her out. It's amazing. It's great. It's 45 minutes. You're in. You get a big push of information and fabulousness, and then you're out. You can ask questions. She's just a delightful host, and I was thrilled to be on and talk to her. She's great. Okay, what magazine spotlighting music and pop culture industry dates back to 1967? Magazine spotlighting the music and pop culture interest industry dating back to 1967 is Rolling Stone, Spin Magazine, or Billboard. So if you know the answer there, Rolling Stone, Spin Magazine, or Billboard Magazine. I could give you a hint, but honestly, once I give you the hint, you'll know exactly who it is. So you'll know exactly which one it is. Um... Yeah, there's a couple of really good ones here. I have one more I will ask. So, <laughs> Gretchen's playing along, Gretchen. Oh no, here's our guest. He wants to come out and say hi. It's Joe Exotic's Tiger. Joe Exotic. Look at that. Very happy that the weather was so nice today because, you know, who doesn't want to be outside on this beautiful day? Like I said, we went from 40s or 50s during the week too close to 80 today. Oh, but wait. Capri Sun, my friends, Capri Sun. And what else do we know about Joe Exotic? Yes. Evelyn, I will never not think of Nick Cage and not think of you. I will always think of you now every time I see Nicolas Cage on TV. He's going to play Joe Exotic. Okay, there's Lita. 
Lita, actually, Lita, I think you were at the book discussion where Gretchen Anthony Skyped in and we did Evergreen Tidings. I am maybe sure you were there unless you had an opera visit that day or a museum visit. But uh, Gretchen Skyped in that day. My God, what a fun. And we ran on over two hours. I can't even believe it. It was like a marathon. It was such a fun interview. And um, <laughs> Evelyn says she still doesn't like Nicolas Cage. Evelyn, if we are still watching from our own homes, I will do a viewing party and I want to watch it with you. Okay. I want to watch a Nick Cage movie with you and we'll invite some people along with us because that's going to be hilarious. Okay. So the answer to that question about the, <laughs> um, the answer to the question about the pop culture music magazine from 1967, Rolling Stone spin or billboard, the answer was Rolling Stone. So you know what to do. You can either celebrate or have a pity party. You pick. Okay, that is very cold and tasty. The last question I have, oh wait, what was it? If I knew that Gretchen Anthony was coming today. I would show you her book, Evergreen Tidings. I'm telling you that. So here's about that book. It reminded me, or I had the same kind of laughter as Where'd You Go Bernadette? There were very uh, astute cultural observations in there, um, family observations, relationship things that I would just burst out laughing from. So uh, it's <laughs> exactly. It's great. I cannot recommend it enough. It is not on Hoopla, but it is on Overdrive. I bet you there's no wait on Overdrive. Get in there now because once I start talking about it, the copies go and I don't want to, um, because I know I remember boosting it the last time and it was it like disappeared. So you had to get on a waiting list. Evergreen Tidings from the Baumgartners. It's exactly what it sounds. It's uh, a letter, a book that's sort of written in those Christmas letters that people send to you about their families and what Johnny has accomplished and all of these other things. But there's also so much more of a backstory. And um, Violet Baumgartner, who is the main, one of the main characters, the main character really reminds me of uh, Olive Kittredge, right? So in fact, one of the ladies at the book discussion said to me, why do you love all these women who are you know, a certain way? And I thought, well, maybe I had better hold up the mirror to myself because obviously I understand their language. Uh, it, it reminds me of a little bit of Emily Alone by Stuart Onan. I just love Stuart Onan. I mean, he is just, and that was another book that we read for a book discussion, Emily Alone. It was a hard sell, but what a discussion we had on that. So if you get a chance to find those, definitely read Emily Alone. It's amazing read Evergreen Tidings, and then The Kids Are Gonna Ask comes out in, I don't know, really remember where the comment was. I'll find it. Oh, wait, here it comes. May 5th, I think. Yes, Evelyn, lobster. Last night at the lobster. It's great. It's great. These, these lo little lives that we all live that people don't think you don't think your life is important or it sort of pales in comparison to sort of the big lives that people are leaving on living on television or in magazines or you know whatever you're doing and yet when the camera focuses on that it's um yes donna i read i did read henry um himself and i i love that there's a you know there's books it's like a a, a piece it's almost like what um the guy who wrote um, Plain Song, the Plain Song trilogy, it has that same kind of a feel to it. Uh, Kent Harreth, I'm giving a lot of readers advisory here, very unsolicited, but boy, yes, I read the book and was at that discussion. What a memory you have. Well, let's just see how long it lasts, shall we? Mm -hmm. Okay, 
So I'm going to give you one more question and let you all go and sit outside on your patios because it is absolutely gorgeous outside. Kent Harif, yes. And actually, Evelyn, you know what I did with that as a book discussion? Now I'm trade talking here, but uh, I did that. We did the Plain Song Trilogy every month. So we did all three books and read them as a piece. And it was some, uh, it was just terrific. I mean, he is, boy, we miss him. We miss him. That's some voice that, you know, sadly silenced. Um, okay, let's see if I can find the first part of this question. This is question. Okay. This publication has been a premier women's service magazine, women's service magazine, with product evaluations and consumer research since its founding in 1885. You know, I don't remember coming out in 1885. I mean, you know, you would think I would remember that, but um, being there and all. Okay, publication, a premier women's service magazine with product evaluations and consumer research since its founding in 1885. Evelyn, let me give you the questions first before you guess. Okay. Was it, is it Good Housekeeping, Better Homes and Gardens, or Ladies Home Journal? Also, those magazines can be found, I'll find it, on RB Digital, right there, right there. Yes, Evelyn, Our Souls at Night, and we did that as a book discussion too. So just to say that I turned 50 people onto Ken Harif, um, whether they wanted to or not. <laughs> was amazing and then people started listening to it. It was it was a great discussion. Like I said, we read them all as a piece. One month, plain song, benediction, and then or was benediction the third one. But there's a, a trilogy, a loosely based trilogy, almost like what happens in Olive Kittred short stories that link the characters. And I mean he's you know he's he was brilliant. Um, okay. So Premier Women's Service Magazine, Product Evaluations and Com Consumer Research Since Its Founding in 1885, Good Housekeeping, Better Homes, Better Home, Homes and Gardens, and Ladies Home Journal, all three on RB Digital. <laughs> all right, lead us, I'm looking at everybody's comments. And Okay, I'm gonna just give you the answer. It is good housekeeping. Yes, whoever got it, there's a few of you got it. Evelyn, yes, Lita, yes. Good housekeeping, look at that. Who's better than you? Who's better than you? Okay, I realize it is late. This half hour went long, as things often do. Don't forget, RB Digital, there is going to be a tutorial on how to access it from any of your reading devices. After this, it's going to go live on Facebook, so in about eight minutes or so. Remember, if you have a teen in town, or you know someone has a teen, make them sign up for this lit night in uh, go to the North Merrick Library page to log in and make your reservation. It's for teens and a bunch of the libraries in our area, Belmore, Merrick, North Belmore, and North Merrick are all participating. I may crash the party. I don't know. We'll see. Um, what else can I tell you? Well, I want to thank very much that beautiful Gretchen Anthony, seal of approval. I hope I get the good housekeeping. I don't know if they're going to give you the gift. I mean, there's too much coconut stuff going on for the good housekeeping seal of approval. Have a great weekend, everyone. Um, Jill, love you. Partner in crime. And um, thanks to everybody who played. This was so fun. Yes, Gretchen, you've got to find Stuart O'Nan. Uh, it's a it's, uh, deep dive, but uh, he writes... It's Elizabeth Stroud. I feel like the two of them are just uh, very similar, very similar in, in the way they construct their sentences and, and just the whole format. It's very, 
Um, Emily Alone just blew me out of the water. That was the first one I read. I hadn't even read the lobster one until I read Emily Alone. So if you want, I'd be more than happy to come back and talk to you about Everly. Oh, Christine. Um, have a good weekend, everybody. I hope you had a good time. Enjoy. And I will see you next week. Cheers. Thanks to the Merit Patrons. Thanks to uh, Director Dan and Assistant Director Diane. Thanks to the Merit Library Board of Directors for being so supportive. You guys are amazing. Thanks to our patrons. Thanks to our first responders. Without you, we are nothing. So before I get emotional, I will see you soon. Gretchen, thank you so much for coming. You can crash anytime. Get Math cousin Matthew to show up, and um, it would be an honor. All right, guys. Mwah. Love you. Bye, Dad. Love you. I'll talk to you in a few minutes. See ya. Yes, my dad watches. How great is that? Lucky. Love you. Bye.